Good day, class. For today's activity, we will be performing cellulose tape perianal swab. But first, let's have a brief discussion regarding what this procedure is all about. If you can remember in your lecture, this talks about a very important nematode, and that is the Enterobius vermicularis. This is a common intestinal parasite or helminth, especially for us humans. The other term used for Enterobius vermicularis is pinworm. Pinworm infection class is usually spread by the fecal oral route, that is, through the transfer of infected pinworm eggs from the anus of the patient to somebody's mouth, either to his or her own mouth or to someone else's mouth, either directly by hand or indirectly through contaminated clothing, bedding, food, or other articles. Pinworm eggs become infective within a few hours after being deposited on the skin around the anus. That's why we do it on the perianal region when collecting the sample for this test. And can survive for two to three weeks on clothing, bedding, or other inanimate objects. People become infected usually unknowingly by swallowing or ingesting infective pinworm eggs that are on the fingers or can be on their fingernails or on clothing, bedding, and other contaminated objects and surfaces. Because of their small size glass, pinworm eggs sometimes can become airborne. That's why if you can remember from your lecture, Inhalation is one mode of transmission for Enterobius vermicularis. So much for our introduction. Let's proceed to how to prepare the cellu swab or the cellulose tape perianal swab. In order for us to create a cellulose tape perianal swab, these are the materials that are needed. We need to have, of course, a scotch tape. For a cutter, can be scissors as well, tongue depressors, clean glass slides, a ball pen, and a paper for our label. It's very important to have a, a sturdy type of paper for our label to avoid scratching it or to avoid tearing the paper. Okay, first off class, what we need to do is to get your glass slides. So for the glass slide, make sure that you identify the frosted end and the back end. So what we need to do is to attach at least three-fourths of the scotch tape to three-fourths from the back of the glass slide. So at the back. So this part here is the back portion of the glass slide. Then that's three-fourths, right? Three-fourths of the glass slide. And then... You can run it over going to the very edge or the very end of the front portion of the glass slide. So it's already at the very end portion of the glass slide. And we need a little bit of space for the label. So what I need to place here is the label in this area here. So that's for the label to avoid tearing. So you can also cover the back portion of the label so that it's fully secured. You will not be able to tear that one. So the back portion is three-fourths only, three-fourths only, and then the front portion is all the way through. Okay, so this is our initial. Next class, we need to get the tongue depressor because that is where we will be placing the scotch tape. Remember that we have placed the three fourths here and then the entire edge here. So we'll remove it completely. We we'll remove completely, and as you can see, it will stop here. So this means the sticky portion is this area already here, class. This one. That's the sticky portion. And then we will place our tongue depressor here at the back because this is how we will be collecting our samples later on. So this means that in your slide, 
the tongue depressor is situated at the back of the slide and then the sticky portion is facing outside. So this is where we will be collecting the sample later in the perianal region of our patient. So later, uh, I don't have an actual anus here. So what I need to um, use is my hand as an example. So in this area here, class, you open the perianal cheeks of the patient, the perianal cheeks, and then you start collecting the samples on the side of the cheeks of the anus. Okay, be careful not to touch it with your bare hands. Always make sure to wear precautionary equipment. So you have to wear gloves. You also need to wear face masks because remember the mode of transmission for enterobius vermicularis is inhalation, can be fomites, can also be ingested or hand to mouth um, mode of transmission. So once again, you place here the sticky portion of the scotch tape to the perianal cheeks of the patient and then this is already ready for microscopic examination. Once you're already satisfied with the collection, you remove this area here and then add a drop of toluin or silene which will serve as a clearing agent for today's activity. So the cellulose tape perianal swab. And then you close it totally in this manner. And then while waiting for it to fully clear, you can start preparing or preparing your microscopes and then read it under the microscope for verification and identification. Just a brief reminder, class, that it is very important to identify the complete identification of the patient. This means that you really have to write the complete name of the patient, its age and sex, and the date of birth. What's also important is the date and time of the collection. So please do not forget this class. This is how to properly label the cellulose state perianal swab that you will be preparing for the activity. This is the summary of the step-by-step -step process for the cellulose state perianal swab. There are actually additional procedural notes for cellulose tape per anal swab. And kindly write this down. Specimens must be obtained, number one, few hours after the patient has retired. So that's either 10 or 11 p.m. So that's at night. Or it can be first thing in the morning before the patient has taken a shower or before the patient has done his or her bowel movement. We have to make sure that the patient has not washed or perform his or her personal hygiene yet. So meaning there should be no bath and no bowel movement done yet before the collection. Once you're ready for microscopic examination, this is what an enterobius vermicularis fertilized egg would look like. It's elongated and flattened on one side, usually described as a D-shaped with thick colorless shell. One distinctive feature of Enterobius vermicularis class is that it's also partially embryonated when it's laid in the perianal region of the patient. Occasionally during the perianal swabbing of the patient, sometimes there are instances that you can also get adult pinworms. So it would look like this in the picture. But so far, as a medical technologist, I have not tried getting adult pinworms during swabbing. Most usually, those are just the fertilized eggs. That would be all for my discussion. Thank you so much for listening. Here are the references I have stated here in my presentation. 
My main reference would be Medical Parasitology in the Philippines by Vicente Belisario and also Clinical Parasitology by Elizabeth Zabin.